Okay, I uh, wanted to do an intro to my word study. I'm a King James Bible believer, so we'll be using a King James Bible, God's perfect written word in English. And the word study I'm going to be starting is the word repent slash repentance. Okay. And I'm going to break it up in books of the Bible, and I'm going to do my best to do it outside. It's summertime, it's springtime to summertime, and I want to try to do my best to do it outside. And I thought it would be best to go over the definitions. Webster's 1828 dic de dictionary definition. Okay. Repentant, repent, the first word. Definition number one, to feel pain, sorrow, or regret for something done or spoken, as to repent that we have lost much time in idleness and sensual pleasures, to repent that we have injured or wounded the feelings of a friend. A person repents only of what he himself has done or said. Get a hold of that one. You, only you, can repent, because this is what I feel is biblical repent as far as it applies to salvation. Only you can repent to God. Only you can have sorrow for sinning against God. I can't have sorrow for you. I can't repent for you. Definition number two, to express sorrow for something past. Okay. We'll keep moving. Um, number three, Definition number three, to change the mind in consequence of the inconvenience or injury done by past conduct. There's your change of mind that people like to talk about. But it's in consequence of the inconvenience or injury done by past conduct. That's why I'm a little weary when people, you know, try to use that for biblical repentance. Uh, have we injured God? No. But that definition will be found in the Bible as we go through Uh, definition number four, apply to the supreme being to change the course or of providential dealings. This is the main one that a lot of people don't get because in the Old Testament when God repents, they're trying to say that he's a sinner because only sinners repent. No, right here, this definition, you'll find it and we'll go through it as we go through the Old Testament. God's going to do this and he changes his mind. He's, gonna do, he's not going to do it. Okay. He thinks this is good, changes, it's a diff he's, he thinks this is good, everything's good. Then he's, he's going to turn around and change his mind, and he thinks it's bad, and he's going to do something about it. That's what the whole point is. When God repents, he's going to do something that he wasn't going to do, or he's not going to do something that he was going to do. Okay. Hopefully that's not too confusing. Um, a good example is, except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Okay. Um, another one for repent, it's a verb, as a verb, uh, to remember with sorrow as to repent rash words. Okay. To repent an injury done to a neighbor, to repent follies or vices. So repent, once again, sorrow can be part of the word repent. A lot of these faith alone people, they try to take sorrow out of it, period. That has nothing to do with the word repent. Okay, when you go through the scriptures, you realize, yes, it does. Okay. Uh, number two, when it comes to repent as a verb, with the reciprocal noun, no man repented him of his wicked wickedness. Okay. The main ones we're going to be following is one, two, three, four, and five. And number one, when it comes to repent as a verb, we might come across that one. Now we're going to get to the word repentance. Okay. Another one that uh, the faith alone crowd hates. Another one that the um, uh, works based. See, with the faith crowd, you've earned God's grace. You've earned it. With the works based salvation, as they call it, works based, they feel that they can do enough good works to trade good works for God's grace. Okay. They hate true biblical repentance. Repentance towards God and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. That's why I'm doing this study. Definition number one. Sorrow for anything done or said, the pain or grief which a person experiences in consequence of the injury or inconvenience produced by his own conduct. 
Okay? We can have repentance towards something we did to a brother and sister in Christ. We can have repentance something we did that kills your testimony with the lost world. Okay. Definition number two. The pain says in theology, the pain, regret, and affliction which a person feels on account of his past conduct because it exposes him to punishment. This sorrow proceeds merely from the fear of punishment. And we're going to find that out. I'm going to jump the gun here. Um, a brother in Christ out there did a great video, uh, Worldly Sorrow versus Godly Sorrow. Okay. Um, Esau and Jacob. Esau, this is the kind of repentance he had, okay? His sorrow proceeded merely from the fear of punishment. He called legal repentance as being excited by the terrors of legal pe penalties, and it may exist without an amendment of life. The fear of punishment is losing, he was a fleshly man, losing things that were flesh that he wanted to feed his flesh, and he feared losing that, and the punishment is he, he lost a lot of stuff. Uh, the Bible says God laid waste his lands for the dragons of the wilderness. God hated Esau. Okay? His sorrow was worldly. We're going to get to that verse, godly sorrow, for godly sorrows worketh repentance to salvation, but the sorrows of the world worketh death. There's two types of repentance, okay? Or three, actually. We'll get to the third one. You can have repentance where you're truly sorry for hurting somebody. You're sorry for something you did because of how it hurts your testimony, whether you hurt a lost person or a saved person, but you're sorry for your actions towards someone else here on earth. Okay? Two, the sorrow of the world, where your sorrow is based off of fear. You're going to lose something, whether it's you can't feed your flesh anymore. Um, the punishment comes and now you're sorry only because you're getting punished. I've had that with children where they're not sorry when they did something wrong. They're only sorry now because they got punished for it. Okay? Two types of sorrow that you can have. One towards the world. One is towards the world and God. The third one, third definition, real penitence, sorrow or deep contrition for sin as an offense and dishonor to God, a violation of His holy law, you know, uh, if you live by, this, by your, uh, see, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The law is a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. It lets us know that we are sinners. So you have sorrow for sinning against God. And the basis ingratitude towards a being of infinite benevolence, this is called evangelical repentance and is accompanied, this is what the faith alone crowd hate, accompanied and followed by amendment of life. A changed life after salvation. But for this word study, you've got three definitions of repentance. Sorrow that's dressed at something you did to, in the world to other people. Sorrow that what you've done to other people, what you did to God, but it's worldly sorrow. You're only upset because you lost something. You did something stupid or said something, you know. Fear of punishment. You don't get what you want. You can't feed your flesh. God's going to punish you. The world, the governments that uh, set up the laws, as long as they're a terror to evil, you're going to get, you have the fear. The sorrow is only because you got caught. You know, the sorrow is because you, made a, you, you did an action that caused you to lose something you wanted. You're not truly sorry by your, because of your actions. You're sorry because of the consequences of your action. That's a good way to say it. And the third way has to do with biblical repentance as it applies to salvation. Mm -hmm. It says here, repentance is a change of mind or conversion from sin to God. Your attitude towards sin changes. Godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation. We did that one. Okay. Repentance is to is the relinquishment of any practice from conviction that is, has offended God. That's the biggest thing there about sorrow. The re repentance is the relinquishment of any practice from conviction that it has been offended God. A lot of people think repentance means that you're turning from 
uh, a change of mind from sin, that you're admitting, going from not believing you're a sinner to believing you're a sinner. I'm kind of against that a lot because a lot of people I've talked to that reject Jesus Christ, they know they're sinners. They know they've done bad things. They might not use the word sin, but they know they're sinners. Well, I'm a good person. I've done some bad things, but I've never killed anybody. They know that they're sinners. The attitude change about sin is going from, I don't care about sin, whoever I've sinned, and the number one person you've sinned against is God, to having sorrow for sinning against God. That's the change. You go from not caring about sinning against God to having sorrow for sinning against God. Your attitude change. That's why after salvation there's a changed life. Because if you're sorry, if I lied to you, and I said, I am sorry that I lied to you, that statement proves that A, I'm admitting I lied to you, and B, I understand the consequences of that lie. Now I've lost your trust. That's why I'm sorry. When you say, I am sorry for sinning against you, God, you're admitting you're a sinner, and you're understanding the consequences. That's why you're sorry. You don't want to go to hell. That's the conscience. The wages of sin is death. Okay? But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. Um, if you live by the flesh, you shall die. You understand the consequences of sin. But that's me kind of getting off on the track. We're going to go through the Bible, and we're going to look up all these words. And the repent and repentance throughout the Bible, we're going to get the context, and we're going to go through it together. So, this is an intro video. I will see you outside with the first video, and we'll take our time, uh, book by book, going through the Bible. Thank you for watching.